In today's video, we're going to rescape this room divider aquarium. This tank is located in a retirement home, but the layout has been up and running for a while. It needs a bit of a change, so let's get started. So I'm in Germany this week, helping out my good friend Juris. Juris is a professional full-time aquascaper, and this retirement home aquarium is basically one of his clients. So this tank has been up and running for a while, and he's been wanting to rescape it. So that's why he called my help. We're gonna do it together. Should be good fun. So what's the plan for today? So the plan for today to give it a rescape all in one day. Uh, step one, get everything out. Obviously, you know, the fish, the plants, the substrate, clean everything. Uh, once we have a blank canvas, then rescape uh, and then put the fish back in. You might ask, how is it even possible to do everything in one day? Well, uh, luckily I have MJ here to help me, hopefully, uh, not only filming, but also helping a little bit. Uh, also, I have two big barrels. One is like 160 liters fresh reverse osmosis water. Second one, I'm going to use water from this aquarium before it becomes dirty and everything. So I'm going to drain the water from this aquarium in a barrel. Uh, so I have two barrels, like more water than goes into this aquarium. So I can quickly refill it 50% old water, 50% new water. That's like a 50% water change. Uh, so we can briefly talk about the system itself. Uh, it is a 100 by 40 by 50 centimeters custom built aquarium by the company Emil. Now I have to find the tool to open the lid because you see, you can't open it. There's nothing uh, here. Yeah, this is like for safety. This is my tool to open the lid. Uh, up here you can see, you know, you, you cannot access the aquarium. You need a suction cup and this is your secret handle. This is a retirement home and some people, they get sometimes crazy ideas, you know, like wash their hands, feed the fish, all that stuff. And, uh, you know, to prevent that, uh, a little tool like this. So it's kind of difficult to get access. And if everyone hears some background noise, this is all the lovely people who live here. They just coming from the lunch break or going to the lunch break. Oops. So over here, this is the uh, yeah, what's called the Chamber of Secrets. We have here an old school reverse osmosis system. Here is the wagon, what I call it. Uh, a barrel with approximately 150, 160 liter volume. And this is like pure RO water in here for now. Uh, it's attached to the tap permanently, has power everything and is controlled by the timer. The timer is set to a specific time. How long it takes to fill up the barrel. It goes on every yeah, every week when I need it. Mm -hmm. Just before I come here, it's full, it's fresh water. It hasn't been standing here for too long. And just in case something is wrong with this device, so we don't have an overflow, I have a water sensor up here. You can see this little thingy. And when it has contact with water, it is going to cut off the power. I'm going to grab it and keep moving. Let's go. Okay, so this is all the the new water for after we're done with the rescape. Exactly. And then we're gonna save like 50% of the old water in this barrel right here, right? Yes. Cool, nice. So now I'm going to drain some of the water um, in those two containers. You can, it's a hack. If you didn't know that, you have the filter outflow uh, and then you have the tubing or, you know, the pipe and then you go inside the tank and then you hold the tubing into the outflow. And if you have enough pressure, the water should be pushed through. Yep, I'm feeling it and then the water is coming out. So we just finished catching most of the fish. What's the next step? Next step is to get out uh, the clean water into the barrel. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, also give the filter a little clean and remove the water from the filter. Guys, this is important when you do something like we are doing here today to remove the water from your filter. Reason why? Approximately after 30 minutes, the water, like filter off, the water is not running. Uh, there is like a lack of oxygen. Some species bacteria, no problem. You know, the ones that unaerobe, they don't need oxygen. Uh, but there are other species that, that need oxygen and they will die if the water is not moving. So in order to keep them alive, it is important just to remove the water from the filter. 
then put all the filter media back into the filter, seal it, you're gonna have a humid environment, which is just fine for the bacteria to uh, stay alive. That's what we're gonna do here. Just gonna basically unplug the filter. Let me hold it, please. <laughs> okay. So we're doing this because uh, there is usually a lot of baby shrimplets in a canister filter. Oh yeah. It's a lot of them. So, we got the majority of the fish here in the basket. There's still some fish hiding in the tank. Guys, we're going to drain a lot of water. This way we have enough clean water for the refill after the rescape. And with the water low, we're going to just cut down and remove a lot of plants. This is going to yeah, remove the hiding places for the fish. So actually, I'm curious, the substrate in this tank is just aquasol, right? Yes. And people always ask me like, how long does aquasol last? Uh, so my longest aqua soil is in the Pineapple Feeder on the Rocks Aquarium mm -hmm. and that aqua soil is, I don't know, four or five years old. Yeah. Um, it works and if you see in this tank, like I said, it's uh, two and a half years old, uh, nothing breaks down. Lifting all the soil. Okay, no, that stays there. <laughs> where do you start? Where do you start? Literally, where do you start? Everything is rooted so crazy. Okay, just pulling out some rocks. Oh, we haven't mentioned it. But if people want to see how this first layer was built, I think you still have some videos on your channel, right? From two years uh, ago? I don't have a build video. I have update videos on the aquarium, how I do maintenance on it. I think okay. that is on my channel. Um, I, I remember seeing this uh, video about this tank definitely, but it was yeah. not a build video. Uh, Full force. Like all the plants with the roots, you know, like interconnected everything. So you're just having a great time over here. <laughs> I'm literally out of breath. And Mark has been joking, like, I, do, do you even work out? <laughs> and I was like, okay, okay, let me finish the first half. And then we can swap. I will go behind the camera and Mark will pull out the plants on the other half and uh, we can see if he can, uh, he's, he's going to do a better job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm up for it. So Mark, tell me, how does it feel? Uh, is it easy, like you said? Uh, very easy, yeah. This is like, I do this every day, man. Go. Are we ready? So, yeah, so Mark is ripping out half of the tank in one piece. I'm going to take out the entire... Look at this. Half of the substrate here. This is nuts. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. I would help you, but I have to hold the camera. <laughs> no, no, wait a second, wait a second. I put it on, on the tripod. Just like this. Okay, I'm gonna come closer with the bucket. Push it in there. <laughs> this is heavy. <laughs> oh. Jeez. We have to cut it in pieces. Jesus. <laughs> what is that? Holy shit. Yeah, but you can examine down here the soil after two and a half years. It still looks good. In my opinion, at least. Okay, tank is almost clean. You're just, just cut, catching the last of the cherry shrimp. We literally caught loads of them already. It's definitely taking up uh, some time, but we just want to make sure we get all of them, you know? Now it's going to be noisy because the remaining parts, uh, the simplest way is a wet vacuum cleaner. So it's always a good investment if you have multiple tanks. So here we're just taking cleaning a tank to a whole new level because we're actually disinfecting everything. Uh, hydrogen peroxide, guys. Uh, the beauty of hydrogen peroxide is you don't have to clean it afterwards. You can just 
keep it in the tank, you know, it will just, you know, react and after 20 minutes it's basically ineffective anymore or 50% ineffective. But the quantities I'm using for this tank, super small, don't have to worry at all about it. I just basically spray everything inside with hydrogen peroxide. This is going to kill off any remaining algae spores, bacteria, whatever. Okay, tank is all clean, so we're now getting ready for the hardscape. We're just bringing in the rocks. So as you can already tell from the boxes, we are going to work with Dragonstone, guys. Big shout out to Arca for sending over all the rocks for this layout. So you have a pretty good selection of large and small pieces. I'm not going to take out the smallest ones because we're not going to have cosmetic sand. Uh, but this is just, you know, eventually for a little bit of detailing, but not, not really needed. No. But you got even the small stuff and there's even some smaller. And since it's Dragonstone, you can easily mesh it up. And if you look inside, guys, there is even more. For the small details. Yeah, small details if you have cosmetic scent. Not going to need this in this layout. It's good variety of sizes. Okay, guys, so we have the Tropica soil uh, that goes in size, regular grain size. How many bags do we have? Uh, we have two and a half bags and a little bit of powdered soil, but let's see how much we're gonna need. Okay, so we're just kind of taking our time preparing the hardscape. The dragonstones that we're using are quite dirty, so I'm just gonna give them a quick rinse in some, uh, some water. It's just a lot of dust and a lot of clay stuck in there, so I just wanna make sure everything is nice and clean. And yours is busy outside. Uh, so ba basically this is a wire brush and some wood has bark and some wood has softer spots like this one. Uh, you will often find something like this with driftwood. And you can use it as it is in your aquarium, but then it's going to peel off in the aquarium. But you can also remove the softer parts with a wire brush manually or a motorized like I got here. So. We'll start with the largest stones. Kind of, yeah. Like this, freestyle. You see it happening. Uh, what is going through my head when I'm doing it? I want stuff coming from here and stuff coming from here and have the middle space more or less open. Of course, it's gonna be a little bit symmetrical. But it's, that's That's okay. kind of what we want, huh? That's what we want, exactly. So it would look quite funny from the top because it's literally those diagonal lines. And what these diagonal lines are allowing me to do is to grab a bigger stone and put it from behind and, you know, do something like this with it if I want it. Or maybe on that side. That looks good. Yeah, okay. It's nice having someone who understands the craft because otherwise I would have to jump down, take a little step away and see if it looks, if it actually looks good or not. So one coming to the front, one going to the back, like a yin yang. Mm -hmm. Now we need more smaller stones to balance out things. Okay, let's grab the wood and create some more vertical movement because now we have rocks that are going to hold the wood and I'm going to basically just put the wood from behind on top of those rocks. So when placing the wood in the layout, you have to consider, you have to clean the glass, you go with your hands in the aquarium and you don't want any super sharp branches you know being too close to the glass because it's going to create scratches on your hand are you happy with the hardscape i like it yeah what about you i like it as well yeah i think for a freestyle that just came like together 15 super, minutes came together super naturally i think it turned out nice so what I'm doing next is uh, I have a liquid super glue here. Actually, this is a prototype from Arca. 
uh, you know, it says liquid, but it's a prototype. It's a new formula I'm about to test. So it's supposed to bond even quicker uh, to make, you know, this whole reaction nicer and quicker. So we're using cotton pads as a exactly. binder? Exactly. You know, those Love it. makeup removals, they're fluffy. You can pinch them off and uh, small portions, they work well. So I have two connections. I go with the glue and then I just apply it on top and then are we gonna see smoke or not? I can hear it's already hardening. Oh, there is smoke. Yep, here we go. Uh, why it smokes? Uh, the cyano acrylate is doing a chemical reaction, a thermical reaction, which, uh, you know, results in the glue hardening. Okay, guys, it's been quite a productive day. So just a quick summary of everything that we did. We started with a, an established tank, uh, took all the fish out, took all the plants out, took all the substrate out. Then we gave everything a really good clean. We even disinfected everything. And then we started building up the new hardscape. So in total, we used just two nine liter bags of Tropica soil. Then we made a hardscape with the Dragonstones and the ancient juniper wood. So the next step is of course the planting. Me and yours are gonna do that right now. And if you guys wanna see how we're going to plant this, this tank, and which plants we're going to use, make sure you guys head over to his channel because we're going to be releasing both of these videos together at the same time. So this is part one of the hardscape, part two will be planting and of course the end result after a few weeks. So this is it for now, thanks for watching, see you guys in the next one.